Aeroplane Racer, the personal pilot for Bill Boeing, and that was after a daring escape from the Soviet Union and his work for the CIA. Few people have lived as remarkable of a life as Mira Slovak. Myra's story is the subject of a new book by author David Williams. And he joins us now this morning to talk about this book and the amazing life it chronicles. David, good morning. Good morning. Happy so to be here. I, he's a hydroplane racer here in the Seattle area. I didn't actually even know about him or his history. And when I read up a little bit about him, I, I was just honestly amazed at his life. It, it is a truly amazing story. And he lived through the Nazi occupation in Europe, then the Russian occupation, then he hijacked an airplane and flew to freedom and went to work for the CIA. Uh, the CIA rewarded him for his work by giving him the cushiest job you could for a pilot, which was being Bill Boeing's mm -hmm. personal pilot. Yeah. And then Bill began to race hydroplanes and, and you've picked up the rest yeah. of that. But it's such a quintessential Seattle story too. It starts out in the world, but it comes right into Seattle with Seafair and Boeing and hydroplanes. Right. And yeah, it would sprung so many different things. So of all that, that Myra has done, what is it that may impress you the most? You know, really, he became such an advocate for freedom. And those of us who have been born with it, just take it for granted. Oh yeah, we can do whatever we want. But if you're not born with it, it's incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used his celebrity. He appeared in Life magazine, he appeared on TV shows. Uh, you know, he was very, very well known and popular back in the 50s. And he used that celebrity to talk about the values of freedom. Mm. What's your connection to him? Yeah, uh, I am the executive director of the Hydroplane Museum in Seattle. I restored Myra's boat to Miss Wahoo. So when we were restoring it, he came up uh, to supervise, make sure I was doing it right, and we became very, very good friends. And when he learned that he had terminal cancer, he asked me to please write his book for him. So, uh, but the big thing about the book that's mm. very, very cool is this weekend on Saturday, we have a, a presentation at the Museum of Flight. We will have one of Myra's planes on display. We'll have his hydroplane on display. Wow. And I'll be talking about the book and signing the book there. Wow. You know, I've always wondered, how do you go through the process of writing these books with the interviews and things like that? It's fascinating it, to me. It is a long process. From the time that we decided to write it to the time it was published was four years. I spent two wow. years researching it. Uh, I interviewed 50 people, uh, read 100 other books. And then uh, two years researching, one year writing, and then once it's done, a year trying to find a publisher. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was a four-year process, quite a long time. Why is it important for people to read this book? Because it tells you not to take our freedoms for granted. Uh, Myra had an explanation that he called freedom the air you breathe. And he always said, um, if you start to lose the air, if you start to choke, you don't think, oh, maybe I'll change things a little bit you'll do whatever you can to breathe. Mm. And that's why he escaped communism, that's why he hijacked a plane, that's why he flew to the, uh, to the West, was to be able to breathe. Right. And for people who don't know exactly how that all went down, which brought him to the U.S., sure. explain a little bit about this hijacking situation. All right, so Myra was a pilot. Uh, he was a professional pilot, he was a captain in the Air Force. The communists had purged the airline because they felt the airline pilots were too liberal that they may want to defect. So they fired all those guys. So they moved the Air Force captains over to take care of the airliners. Um, Myra had a, a run-in with the communists. He didn't want to stay there anymore. So he hijacked his very own airplane. <laughs> he smuggled guns on board. He had two uh, accomplices, handed out guns, and took over the plane from the cockpit. Wow. And uh, then dove down to about 100 feet and flew across Europe in the dark of night uh, with MiG fighters chasing him about 100 feet off the Wow. Uh, off yeah, the so ground. radar couldn't wow. detect him. Right. He, yeah. the, the communist radar could only go to 500 feet, so he had to fly under the communist radar. Wow. Amazing. Uh, amazing that's story. amazing. Yeah. What a story. And then his connection to Bill Boeing. Boeing is such an integral part of the community here. Boeing's a huge part. I mean, not, not just the company, but the individual. Bill Boeing was very generous right. and, and you know, has funded a lot at Children's Hospital. And, and the story just connects to all aspects of Seattle culture. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Fabulous. A, All right, and this yeah. airplane pilot becoming a hydroplane racer and there's a, kind of a lot of similarities between those two things, right? There's a tremendous similarity and that's also why boat racing was so popular here in the 50s because we had a lot of boats, we had a lot of airplanes, and well, hydroplane racing just combined it all together. Yep, so Seattle. Let me see the book there. All this right, is David there you go. Williams, the book here called A Race to Freedom. The Myra Slovak story. Thank you so much. It seems fascinating. Thank you very much. And if you're looking for something to do this Saturday, come on down there to the Museum of Flight. There we go, right there. Perfect. Thanks, right. David. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you very much.